morning. I am off to check sheep. When my husband left at 6.30 this morning, he was supposed to text me or call me to let me know if they were in the neighbors. We left them out last night because we forgot and we were lazy and we forgot. So I didn't get a text or a phone call. So I'm calling that a win that they weren't out, but I'm not seeing them anywhere either. So I need to uh, head out and find out exactly where they're at. There they are. I'm not gonna get any closer. I don't really wanna disturb them, push them. They are pretty content where they're at. And they didn't go to the neighbors, so that's a plus. But there is so much feed. You can't imagine they're gonna go anywhere, but they have proven us wrong before. We're not quite gaining as much as we'd like on this fence. We, so Sunday, no, Saturday we ran out of daylight. Plus the storm came in, it was getting cold. And we were just pretty much done for the day. And then yesterday we ran out of fuel for the post pounder. So we only got a couple posts in. And tonight he has a meeting. So I don't know how far we're gonna get on this at all. And yeah. Like every other project we have, it's a work in progress. The goal is to get this done this week. So we will have all week to deal with it. And hopefully, hopefully just get it done. It's, it's not pretty. It's not one of our best fences. We took two rolls of wire, spliced them together and stretched it. And we remembered why we quit doing it that way. It, does not make a good fence. So we will go back to just stretching the 330 odd feet that we were normally doing rather than trying to stretch 660, 70 feet or whatever it is. So, yeah. But that's as far as we got yesterday. So we still have all that all the way down to the loader to do. Hi, okay, girls. Like I'm not happy. So I pulled the three biggest girls from that pen. They're more than able to be weaned. That just leaves these three on the machine. And these guys are not happy about it. My baby. But let's go see how Mama's doing. Mama? Oh, baby. Mama letting you eat? Oh, good deal. Good mom. Maybe we'll let you out of there for a little bit today. See how good you really are. So I have one big project that has to get done today and I'm really not looking forward to it. So I need to take 10 head of sheep to the vet by myself. And normally I don't have an issue because my husband does the driving. I'm not a fan of driving. Uh, I can't back a trailer to save my life. So I'm not really sure how that's going to work. But basically I need to get seven of these U's and three of those U's into the trailer and to the vet by two o'clock today. I think if I start at noon, I might make it on time. I think the hardest issue is going to be not this group because these lambs really don't, they're not too worried about moms right now. Um, but getting the ewes separated off from the lambs is going to be the biggest issue. And then down the alley into the trailer, which he did get ready for me. So it's one less thing I have to worry about. 
It's just getting them in the trailer, driving to the vet won't be an issue. Backing into wherever the vet needs them to be is going to be the issue. And then once I get home, I don't care if it takes me two hours to back, <laughs> back in here to the barn because uh, nobody will be watching me. Um, so yeah, but that's really the only thing I have to do today. So, so the reason we're gonna take these guys to the vet is we're gonna get them bled. They are going to test for tuberculosis and brucellosis. I think that's right. Um, because we were going raw. Uh, there's a couple reasons for it. First off, Idaho has come out with a new regulation on raw milk. So for us, as it, so it used to be you could get a raw milk small animal permit. Um, I could milk seven sheep, and as long as they were tested negative, then I could send them, I could take that milk and sell it. But I could only do seven. Well now, because of COVID and the demand to get product out, they have changed it to you can milk as many as you want as long as they are tested negative and you have to label anything you sell that is raw as being raw milk. So as long as you have that label on it and your animals that are, you are milking have tested negative, you can sell and milk as much as you want. So I think that's the route we're gonna go. Um, we don't, I really still wanna go grade A. I just don't know that it's gonna happen in the next year or two. But this is a way for us to be able to milk our sheep and get our cheese out there. And I'm kind of excited, I'm kind of scared, but it is, it's something that we, all, all the cheese that we do for ourselves at home, we do raw. We don't pasteurize it. We, I just make cheese out of it and we eat it, and yogurt and we eat it. I eat it, they don't like yogurt. But it is a big step. Um, there are some other regulations that go with it, but we will have to double check with my husband because I'm not 100% sure, but from the way he made it sound, we don't get inspected by USDA if we go raw. All we have to do is make sure our animals are tested and have that raw milk sticker. I will have to double check with him on that, but I think that's what we read and at least that's what I got out of it. He's a lot smarter at the whole political mumbo jumbo stuff and so he he gets it a little deeper than I do. Um, but I will double check with him and let you know if I'm wrong because I probably am. Okay, why in your opinion why are we going raw? So, our barn was originally grade A, mm -hmm. and grade A allows for transport, no, allows you to sell and transport out of the barn. Since our new goal is to make cheese on site we can do it either grade A or raw but if we do it grade A then our processing area for the cheese side has to be grade A also which is a lot bigger deal than just using your equipment for the raw side because even though our room is only 12 by 12 feet mm -hmm. with with a pasteurizer in it mm -hmm. and a 
stainless steel table with a cheese press, they still treat you just like it is like you're a Glambia or a Chibani, Chibani or, or a, a, a large manufacturer right. that's doing a million pounds a year. Right. You, you land under the same rules. So the, the goal is to go ahead and just process the cheese raw, which means z virtually zero inspections. Okay. Okay. So... <clears throat> The, their biggest, used to, you could do raw mm -hmm. under the small herd exemption. Right. Which, I guess, with the sheep, it would be small flock, which allowed us to milk seven head. Right. Which they considered personal consumption and, and maybe one neighbor that you could sell to. Okay. Now they have, Idaho has lifted that because they want food, neighborhood food accessible. So there's no limit on the number of, of sheep, we, of can sheep do. we can milk. The, the requirements are still the same. They have to be tested annually for tuberculosis and brucellosis. Yes. And they have to be negative on both of those in mm -hmm. order to be in the milk stream. Right. Then they have the only... You still have to have a permit, but the only thing that the USDA looks at is your labeling. And that's where we have to have the raw milk sticker. And it has to say raw milk sticker. And does it? It, it has to contain, your, your label has to contain the word raw. Right. So it could say raw, it could say cheese made from raw milk. Okay. Okay. Then it has to say the quantity of the contents. So half ounce or eight, ounce, eight ounces, whatever, whatever you okay. put on there. Okay. And then it has to contain the species. So it has to say raw sheep milk, milk. eight che ounce cheese. Cheese, cheese or. made from raw sheep's milk. Okay. Eight ounces. Okay. And it has to say. Uh, I believe, I believe it has to have your raw permit number on it. Oh, I didn't realize we'd get a permit yes, number. Yes, the oh, permit, okay. the permit is, the permit is basically for the inspection of the label. It's not for the inspection of the facility or any of that. It's only for the label. So how do you get that? So once we get the sheep tested... And the negative tests back, then we have to contact USDA. Yes. And yes. have them come out and inspect. No, we take we take our label to them. We take the copy. Oh, so we have to make a label. Yes. And take it to them, and, and then they, they have, have to approve they it. They approve the label and give us our permit. Okay, I'm with you now. And and it has to say, the label has to have a warning on it. Right. And it has to say this product is made from unpasteurized unpasteurized or un, or inspected and that it's weird how it's phrased because it's not it's uninspected right. <laughs> but it, it has to say that it's from from fr, has not been oh it has not been pasteurized or it has not been inspected and may contain harmful bacteria Okay. Raw milk, no matter how carefully processed, may be unsafe. That warning label has to be on the label. And that's label. a whole nother can of worms we're not even going to open because people are very, very passionate about the whole raw milk pasteurized right. debate. And right. I know I like raw milk. I haven't hasn't killed me yet, but... I you won't touch it. I don't drink real ma raw milk, but I eat the crap out of raw cheese. Well, that is true. So that is it, true. It hasn't the, killed you yet either. No, so. but but the raw the raw milk isn't what's what. It, I'm not scared of the raw milk. Mm -hmm. I don't like the flavor of it. It's so good. I know, but it's but I've grown up my whole life drinking like 
watered down cow milk. Watered down cow milk. And my doctor tells me to eat, drink even watered or down cow's milk because of, uh, you know. I Because my cholesterol's through the roof. I can I can do like a one percent per yeah. milk if you prefer, and and make butter out of the cream and thin my my milk down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anywho, <laughs> 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 let's just not go there. Okay. But anyway. Anyway, so I love the cheese. Yes. Not so much the milk. I do. There's just something. It is so sweet. It is so creamy. It's like, it's like eating liquid ice cream. Could be. It is. And maybe if you'd freeze it, I'd eat it. Maybe that's all it would take. Well, I'll I, put it on the list. I'm telling you, if you said, "Hey, honey, I've got some ice cream for you," I know you'd eat. The crap I'd out probably of that come stuff. running. Yeah. So, there's just something about the milk side. But anyway. Anyway. So, so that's the reason we're going to do raw for the time being. Is because we don't have the money to get the ultra, I'll use the term gold plated. There you but, go. But the ultra gold plated equipment in our cheese processing room yet. Yes. We have enough, we have enough usable stuff that is plenty good quality, mm -hmm. but I don't know that it would all pass inspection because some inspectors say you can't do this. Some inspectors say you you can do that and you can't do this. And I don't know that we're ready for that. No, that it's, it's, step yet. It's so. still in the cards. I would really like to go grade A eventually, but yes, I agree. but but right now it's it's we want to milk and we want to make cheese and we want to get our product out to people. Right. So I think that's that's kind of our goal is just getting it out there. And then and we've given a bunch to a lot of people and no one's died yet. And everybody's really liked it. And everybody likes our cheese. In fact, a lot. A lot. So and if you back to the raw versus grade A discussion, everybody that is like ultra real cheese makers prefer raw period because you get the better the better the better that's mm -hmm. i mean the healthier the better the yeah. health, you know all that but but there's also the side of it that if we do the aged cheese also that is true that it will still be raw but it will be aged out yes. so that it will not be necessarily considered raw anymore. Yes, but, if you but you have to age it for like 3 months. Think is it it's 90 days? I think it's 60 days is all. I can't remember. But I'm not 100% sure and I haven't looked. That same know. label may need to be on. It may it that it, it may be. But 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 According to everybody out there in the real world, if it's aged more than that, the bacteria is gone. Yeah. There is no chance of it. Even if it was there, it's gone. It's gone. So, but but we prefer to do a soft cheese. Yes. So, therefore, we have to design the label with the warning label and our permit number and our logo and the contents. And I think it says it has to have a bold, contrasting line around it. And that's, blah, 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 blah. That's so, all you love. You are the artist of so, the family. So we will... We'll figure that out. We, we still have to figure out what kind of... What type of cheese. Are we just doing a cheese curd? Or are we going to do an actual, like, cheddar soft cheddar or a Monterey or a Colby Jack or a I don't know. Yeah. See we haven't figured that out well, yet either. Correct. I want to do a feta. Really bad. I love feta cheese. So feta everybody with that, watermelon and mint. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. But everybody that I've talked to that's tried our cheese kind of equates it to 
more of a mozzarella like cheese oh. stick the the string yeah, cheese yeah 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 that'd and, be a good one to do and so, just a mozzarella and so i'm wondering if we since it's going to be a fresh cheese you know maybe we're going to do something like that that's just a snacking cheese but not necessarily a curd that's actually a good idea and not worry about the squeaky cheese side of it but do so that's we actually a good idea so we could do a mozzarella but not not do balls of it but do a snacking type cheese because most people envision the mozzarella as a cooking cheese. Right. And I'm not saying it wouldn't be good for cooking because because we have cooked with some. We have, and it's been really good. And it's been really good. But but I don't think it it doesn't have the same texture that most think people think of as mozzarella. Yeah. So so I think a snacking cheese wouldn't be a bad idea. But okay, well, we're milking in like ten days. Yes. If all our tusks come back negative. Yes. And, and no. In ten days, we may be. Uh, no, we haven't hit our sixty days on that hard cheese you made. No, it was April. It was like Earth. April twelfth. 20th somewhere in there right and today's like may the 6th or something sure so so we're only 30 days into it so we can't mm -hmm. even test that version yet. correct but and it is just a regular cheddar right but but we also but if it turns out good i'll make more yes but we we also want to try to make something that will make like a grilled cheese sandwich and that other cheese the 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 cheddar curds that we do those are really good melted oh man and they're like a marshmallow texture kind of so and a little burnt on the outside That's yes so, so so if we could do that that might be a good one to use as a as a it's not stringy like fake american cheese is true but the flavor is incredible mm -hmm. so so we've got We have choices. options. We, we do. We have so. choices. We just need to narrow it down. I'd really like to just stick with three. I'd like to do... I'd, I'd like to do a hard cheese. I'd like to do a soft cheese. And I don't know what kind of third. Maybe two softs and a hard. I'm, I'm just not sure. So most people think of a sharp hard cheese. Yeah. And I'd rather it not be a sharp No, you cheese. don't like sh sharp cheese. Oh, I like hard. I like it, but most people don't. See, the trouble is, you and I are cheese people. We are. We like cheese. We do. A lot. A lot. A lot of different kinds of cheese. Most people have been raised on on American craft, craft American, singles. and they don't know what real cheese is. So, in their mind, that's what a grilled cheese sandwich is. Pull the plastic wrapper off. Heat it both sides, slap it on there. And and so that's what you're competing against until yeah. you can get them to try it. True. So so we have to we have to combat that a little bit. Yes. So that's why if you're gonna make it to sell, so to speak, then the sharp cheese is kinda last on the list because it's for us to eat and not to sell. Right. So I'll be making a lot of cheeses, a lot for us and a lot to sell. And I only have like a 30, 45 day window to milk because summer's coming and we'll be in the hay. No, we won't. Yeah. Well, not, sort of. Not so much. Not as much, but we will still be, we still have our fields and yeah. we are not going to let them go this year. No, you're right, but we'll you'll have you'll have plenty of time to milk your sheep and make your hay. Make cheese? No, make your hay. <laughs> <laughs> your hay. That's what. Yeah. Yeah, that's a whole nother vlog. We'll get there. All right. But yeah, so that's why we're gonna go take the sheep to the vet to get them bled, and then. And then we'll start milking again.
because when we went to Wisconsin, we just dried off the ewes that we were milking because I didn't have anybody to do them while I was here. So we haven't milked for the last couple weeks. And it's time to start again. So we'll take 10 of these guys in, get them tested, and then I think it only takes like three or four days to get the results back. And then we'll have a rodeo in the milk barn because not a single one of these that I'm taking in have ever been through the milk barn. So yes, this is the alley we, they t we have to take them down and get them into the trailer down there. And the dogs will be locked up because they are just a pain when trying to move the sheep. They usually tend to get us in trouble. Trying to decide what is gonna be the easiest way for me to sort these guys off. One is to run them up the alley by our jugs and pull out those ewes that I need and then put them in the catch pen. The other would be to run them through our chute system, which might actually work because then I could lock the babies in the, in the catch pen Maybe I'll do that. I'll run them all into the catch pen, pull out the moms I want, and then I can put all the babies and the moms that need to stay here back in that big pen. Let's try that first. Come on, girls. Come on. Come on. There you girls go. moms. Now I got to get them into the trailer. All right, I brought a panel down here in hopes that I can close them off so they're closer to the trail trailer and put a panel under there. Hopefully they will not try to go under the trailer. I really hope if they do, I'm in trouble. I'm also gonna hedge my bets. I'm gonna throw some hay in the trailer. Hope to chum them in. We'll see if it works. Okay, that went way smoother than I thought it would. They like just bombed in there. Okay, I'm happy now. I figured this was gonna be like an hour long project. I've got like 45 minutes before I have to leave now. But they've got hay, so they'll be fine. Yeah, I'm gonna let them settle. And then we'll head for the vet. That went a lot smoother than I thought. And it's not really hot today. It's, it's a comfortable spring day. It's like 55, 60. So um, I'm not too worried about them being in the trailer for the next little while. Hey, Luna. Hey, Luna. How's your babies? Okay, so since I have time, I'm gonna get those moms and babies that I left behind back in their pen. Then I don't have to worry about them at all. I gotta go put the gate back on, and that's a two-person job. Ah. 
So everybody went where they were supposed to, except my two escape artists. They followed the path they always do, went right under the panel and back in here. So they're just gonna stay here till I get back. Here we go, wish me luck. I hate driving. Made it, and now we wait. Okay, we made it home, all in one piece. And no panic attacks, no freak outs. My day's going good so far. So I am going to drop these guys off. Um, I will save you all the pain of me trying to back, hopefully. Although as good as my day's going, maybe it won't be so bad. Maybe it will three tries and I'll have her done. Yeah, um, maybe, probably not, but we'll, we'll shoot, we'll, sh we'll shoot for that. Um, but yeah, I will let me back the trailer in, get these girls unloaded, and then I'll be back. Okay, it took four tries, but I didn't hit the barn, so that's really all that matters. All right, so I did let her loose just now. We will see if she's gonna be good to her baby or if she's still gonna be obnoxious. Give them a little time to settle. All moms and babies are reunited. Okay, so here is the good, the bad, and the ugly of the whole situation. Good thing is, we got them done. Um, I didn't get any video because the vet was drawing the blood and giving the TB test, and the vet tech was handing him everything, and I was holding the sheep. We did everything in the trailer, so I didn't have to back, except to get out of the parking lot, but it was okay. I got it. Um, so the bad is that I have to do this again in thir on Thursday. I had forgot with the TB test, you have to go back and have them read the test because what they do is they insert, um, of course now I forget what it is. Uh, I want to say they insert like a, a not a live virus, maybe it is, I can't remember. But if they have TB, it will react. Okay, so they give a shot in the tail and then in 72 hours they read that and it will let you know whether they have TB or not. The brucellosis, I have said it wrong like several times, it is brucellosis. That test, they draw blood and then it gets sent off to a lab and we'll get our results within like a week. So. It will be at least that long before I'm able to milk these guys because they, most of them lambed three weeks ago maybe. Uh, some of them only lambed two weeks ago. So uh, yeah, no rush, but they will be ready. I will have the test results when we do get around to milking them. So all that being said, I really should have had them sheared before we took them in there because he had to shear a little bit um, or clip a little bit on their necks to be able to get the vein. And yeah, that was a my bad. So probably, probably between now and Thursday, I should get them sheared. So I'm gonna go for lunch. It's like three o'clock and I'm hungry. And then I am going to YouTube how to shear sheep. So that's gonna be my afternoon. Then I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna feed and maybe take apart the chicken coop. It uh, it needs it. It needs it needs to be dismantled so that we can so that we can put it back together the way we want it to. Well, they said it was supposed to storm this afternoon. I'm uh, afraid they're probably right. It rained. So uh, I took an extra long lunch. Now it's time to go feed. Looks like I'm gonna be in between storms. We'll feed fast. Well, she's definitely not happy with it, but she's letting that lamb nurse. But boy, is she a wound you. 
so I'll leave them tonight put the water back in here for her but if she keeps backing that lamb against the wall she may just end up back in the stock again hey Elvis that's my Elvis hmm. yeah him a good boy You're a good boy. Yeah. Just started raining as I got done feeding so I still have to do the dogs um, and the sheep are in the pasture I don't want them in but I'm gonna wait till the rain stops and then go push them out uh, because I don't want to unhook the pickup yet I'm gonna need it tomorrow I have to go to work and then I have to go to town uh, and since my pickup is still hooked to the fence I have to use his pickup Okay. Get it from my father. Go. Oh, it worked! <laughs> he just have to hit it hard enough. <laughs> Stupid human tricks. Pretty easily entertained. <laughs> 